Hello, so here is the second video of my four part series of listening, decoding, and use. So I'm Richard Caldwell of Birmingham in the United Kingdom. The IATFL conference in Manchester was cancelled this year, and my workshop uh, was to have been my last act as an active member of the ELT profession. So I've decided to turn some of the content into four short YouTube videos with handouts and worksheets available on the Speech and Action website. So this is the second video, Consonant Death, the case of T, or rather, the consonant death, the case of T. Um, the rationale and further explanations of the types of activity and the types of theory behind this workshop can be found in my book, A Syllabus for Listening, Decoding. Listening, Decoding in Use is a publication design. It does not exist. It doesn't yet have a planned future. The idea is that we could have 50 or 60 short units demonstrating, amongst other things, the fate of consonants, and particularly consonant death. And I'm going to take the example of t, t, and show the kind of activities that would appear if such a book were to come into existence. So this is listening, decoding and use, consonant death, the case of T, the case of T. But before we go on, I must remind you that for listening and pronunciation, the goals for mastery are different. Our goal as teachers of listening is to help our learners understand fast, messy, authentic speech, which is much more varied and unpredictable than what they need to produce in order to be intelligible. This is a quotation from a book published 10 years ago. And it is a quotation we have still yet to come to terms with. So consonant death, the case of T. If you look at the speech unit below the speaker, we could go, you're pretty much allowed to do anything. But very commonly, pretty, when used like this, loses the T. Loses the T. You're pretty much allowed to do anything. You're pretty much allowed to do anything. So that was an example from spontaneous speech, but this is an example from a textbook. So one of the great things about um, Hugh Della and Andrew Walkley's uh, outcome series is they include slow, careful and fast, messy versions of some sentences. And one of the sentences they use is given in red here, and this is their recording. And were sitting there crying. And were sitting there crying. Now we'll hear the faster version. And we're sitting there crying. And we're sitting there crying. And the T is much less clear, but actually you'll find that it's not there at all. Sitting there sounds like sing there. Sing there. And we're sitting there crying. Sing there. And we're sitting there crying. Now. It's important to realise that here we're not dealing with fine phonetic detail. What we're dealing with is what I term a reasonable hearing. So if you have phonetic expertise and access to machine analysis, you may determine that the T, the T has occurred, that something is there in the sound substance that represents the T. But for real-time listening, a reasonable hearing of these extracts is one in which the T is absent. You're pretty much allowed to do anything. So now we'll go into this activity and we will start with greenhouse versions of these four sentences. So greenhouse versions mean each word is separate and each segment of each word is carefully pronounced. She gave him a sheet of paper. I need a little bit of food now. I think it is getting hot 
in here. It is just a matter of time, you know. In the, in the garden, we apply the rules of connected speech to these same sentences. She gave him a sheet of paper. I need a little bit of food now. I think it's getting hot in here. It's just a matter of time, you know. One of the exercises I would have experimented with had the Manchester conference taken place is that we would have workshopped this activity. So we fill the red gaps between the prominent syllables with a noise which is somehow related to the words they represent. So here we go. She gave paper. I need food now. I think it's hot in here. It's just time, you know. And uh, now we're going to plug the gaps, but not with the sight substance filling in where the red X's are, but you'll hear the full sound substance of each speech unit, A, B, C and D, but without the aid of the um, sight substance, without the aid of seeing the words. So here we go. She gave him a sheet of paper. I need a little bit of food now. I think it's getting hot in here. It's just a matter of time, you know. So all of these things are preparation for a matching activity. The activity here is to match the extracts given at the bottom of the page to the sentences which are given in the table towards the top of the page. So you have to match sentence A with its extract below. And on the handout, what you have to do is simply to write A next to the relevant extract, B next to the relevant extract, etc. So let's have a listen. It's getting hot. It's getting hot. So, in which sentence does that belong? Which sentence does that belong to? And the matter of the matter of which sentence does that belong to? Which sentence does that belong to? And here's the answer key. It's getting hot. Goes with C. I think it's getting hot in here. I think it's getting I think it's getting I think it's getting hot in here. And the second extract uh, goes with A. She gave him a sheet of paper. She gave him a sheet of paper. And D. And the next extract goes with D. It's a matter of. It's, a matter of it's just a matter of time, you know. It's just a matter of time, you know. And lastly. Little bit. Of, little bit. Of, I need a little bit of food now. So that goes with B. And here's a sight substance version of the answer sheet. So A in more careful speech would be, she gave him a sheet of paper. And B is, I need a little bit of food now. And C is, I think it's getting hot in here. And D, it's just a matter of time, you know. So, okay, getting to the right answer is not the point. The value is in the making of the journey. The overall purpose is to make learners familiar and comfortable with the unruliness and messiness of speech. And they should do this by doing vocal gymnastics at speed and should not aim to be too precise. Accuracy is not the point. Being comfortable with fuzziness and messiness is the point. Other exercise types, doing the botanic walk, moving from greenhouse to garden to jungle and back again. For example, a little bit of, a little bit of, a little bit, a little bit of, a little bit of, 
etc. Another exercise type um, is illustrated here where learners themselves knock out the T's in the crush zone of column three. It is the second biggest city in my country, I think. So that is a kind of greenhouse version. It's the second biggest city in my country, I think. It's the second biggest city in my country, I think. Another exercise type can be seen where we combine consonant death and foul play. And by foul play, I mean playing with the vowels. So we get a little bit, we get it with um, consonant death a little bit, and then we change the vowel. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Ululbut, Ololbot, Ululbut. Now remember, we're practicing the mess. Why? Because for listening and pronunciation, the goals for mastery are different. So our learners need to understand fast, messy, authentic speech, which is much more varied and unpredictable than what they need to produce in order to be intelligible. Remember that. Okay, so in these four videos, I'm demonstrating design ideas for a future publication, but I am retiring from active participation in the LT, so I will neither be authoring nor publishing listening decoding in use. So if you work for a publisher who might be interested in buying the rights to this design, do encourage them to get in touch via my website. The next video in the series is the Polar Risk, the case of can and can't.